In front of me, I've got a variety of fabrics that I've worked on. Now, some of them are silks, some of them are viscous, some of them are linen, and of course, cotton, which I love working on. Let's begin with this one. This is a georgette, a chiffon, a very light chiffon. And what I did first, I actually dyed it with a pale blue dye, and then I stamped the wax in repeated patterns all over it. So it's very, very simple, but it's lovely, it's sort of um, gorgeous, and you can wrap it around your neck, and it's very light, and it, it would make a wonderful present for someone. The next one is, uh, is another silk, and I've done a multitude of colors on it, and I've waxed areas. If you notice, there's no white on it, but I've dyed it, parts of it with yellow, and then I've highlighted some with the wax, and then added um, layers of other colors. But this is a habitai, and it's richer than, in color than the sheer chiffon. If you want to, you could, this could be made into a top. In fact, this is a scarf but you can actually do all sorts of wonderful things. And here's another one. This is a thinner habitai, a pongee, that's another way. Silk is great because it's such a light feel to it. It can drape around your shoulders in a wonderful exotic way. And in this one, I've just used masking tape and I masked the edges, the border. And then when I brushed the wax on, I went over the masking tape and the wax went over the edges and created a lovely feathery effect. I also cut out a leaf shape and used it as a stencil. And I then used a brush and dipped it into the wax and then spattered all over. And where the image was, I peeled it off and there you have the shape, the negative shape of the leaf. Here I used a slightly satiny silk and it's such a wonderful, rich color. It's a little bit thicker in quality, and so therefore the colors are much more vibrant. I actually used a stencil. I cut out a stencil of a butterfly, and therefore waxed through there, and then I graded. I, and I'll show you later on in this, this section, I'll show you how to blend the colors to get a nice gradation of color. This is a heavier quality of, of silk, and I've used uh, the wax and the brush, this very fine Japanese brush to fill in areas. This is actually Japanese silk, sometimes even slightly thicker. They use it for their kimonos, but it's got a lovely quality to it. It doesn't crush. And sometimes when you've waxed something and then taken out the wax, it's got a body that you wouldn't get normally. But notice how I can just crumple it like that and it doesn't have any folds in it. And then when I was writing my book called Start to Batik, I was, it's really aimed for younger people. And what I wanted to do was find ready-made materials that some teenagers or young adults could use. And so I bought this viscous scarf for hardly anything, and I decided that I would like to um, wax very simple designs on it. Now, because it's a very loose weave, it's very difficult to get a nice clean line on it. So what I did was I, I used this paintbrush, I cut out little sections of it and dipped it into the wax and then went like that dipped it into the wax. Sometimes the wax didn't go through the fabric, but it didn't matter. I was just tr trying to create a sort of pattern design. And then I used some satin to cover this homemade picture frame, really. I did a little few little squiggles on it, but the wonderful thing is that you can pad it, and it's got a slight sheen on it that creates a nice sort of effect for a for a picture frame or for even covering a book sometimes. And this piece of fabric is actually organdy. And it's very thin, you can see through it. What I did was I, I, I colored it with a variety of colors, waxed some areas, 
and then I actually dyed it in black. And then I discharged, I, I used some diluted bleach. And you have to make sure when you're bleaching on fabric that you rinse it out completely. On paper it doesn't matter so much, but here you have to rinse. And you think you've got to a certain point when it's bleaching out, and you think, oh, I'll stop there. And of course, it carries on bleaching afterwards. But anyway, it's more sort of um, an Aboriginal design here. And this one here is linen. I've actually got the wax still in there. I haven't finished it. But I just thought it'd be nice to show you that it's got a different, it's got slightly rougher quality. So you can, can do some reasonably detailed work. But you have to be careful because when your chanting comes along, sometimes hits again to thread, so you have to be careful. But the quality of fabric that I really enjoy working on is cotton. And most of the fabrics that you see in Indonesia is actually done on primissimo cotton. It's a very fine quality of fabric. They use it for clothing, for carrying wood and things, and it's just a lovely, strong fabric, closely woven. You get the intensity of the colors, and it's really vibrant, and it's lovely to work on because it's so smooth. You can work on all sorts of cottons. You can work on sheeting, but that's a little bit thicker. You can work on uh, cotton lawn, but I prefer this quality because it makes wonderful sort of easy to stretch, and also you get these lovely, vibrant colors. And finally, this is one that I've just recently finished, but it's just showing that you don't have to do something abstract or just patterns on. A lot of my work is actually very pictorial, and you think, actually, it doesn't look like a batik, but because of the quality of the fabric, I can work very fine details on it. I know that the wax, when it's hot enough, it penetrates. I know it will, re will resist the colors that, that I paint over it. And if, as you can see, my style is slightly painterly. And when it's framed up, you wouldn't know that it was a batik painting. But here, just to show that I can, you can actually produce something refined and something as detailed as this, as a batik.